Though when you move to the 60s and beyond, there are many films where people mistakenly think are rear projection like Hitchcock's The Birds, when really they're just using what's called sodium vapor process, which uses a specific hue to create mattes. One film was sensitive only to the sodium light on the backing. The second film in the camera was sensitive only to the white light falling on the actors. So as a result, there was absolutely no contamination of the foreground actors by the lighting from the background. But even though this new matte process started getting heavy use, versions of projected techniques have continued, like in Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, although again, this is often mistaken as rear projection when it's really front projection. This allowed for a more saturated and sharp image. Rear projection didn't go extinct there though. You could still find it in films from Tarantino using it specifically in stylized ways or Cameron's use in Aliens or Terminator 2. Rear projection is a, is a very old fashioned technique and a lot of people don't use it anymore, but we used it on Terminator 2, and it gives you a great deal of control and safety with the actors. And you can do some pretty outrageous stuff that you couldn't really do. I mean, you couldn't put an actor up on top of a moving car on a soundstage, in a night scene especially, where you can get away with more visually uh, with rear projection. It just gives you a lot more control. So I would definitely prefer rear projection versus, say, blue screen composite, because I can manipulate the elements you know, through the lens. And we also tried our hand at the effect 11 years ago, though I was never really satisfied with what we were able to accomplish with the type of projectors that we had. But it's still an effect that I love, and mostly the idea of having that physical environment there, not a green screen, but instead a visible thing to react to and pull light from. Obviously, most recently, we've seen incredible advancements with this idea, like that massive wraparound front projection you see in Oblivion that allowed them to have physical backgrounds and create light from that background. Or most recently, with the mind-blowing virtual production used in The Mandalorian, which if you have have not seen that, just go to the link below and watch it. it. It's absolutely going to change filmmaking. But while the process of Oblivion and Mandalorian are really cool, they are entirely outside the realm of possibility for anything we could pull off, technically or financially. And why am I talking about this? Well, LG sent us this Cinebeam 4K laser projector, and good God, is this thing awesome. You can stream 4K right from the projector, which is the only projector that can stream 4K content right from it. I actually compared it to my home projector and the difference is really insane but instead of doing a normal ad read in the middle of the episode I wanted to try out some ideas of how we could get rid of green screen which although we are on our old background this is not our old green screen it's the projector. And the way that we're doing this is front projection, which I haven't done a lot of this because with normal projectors, the problem is the throw, how far you have to have the projector from the wall to make it all work, which means the image is going to be on your talent and the light beam across the room is gonna cause a lot of problems as well. One of the reasons this is so interesting for work like this is that it's a short throw projector. So we can have this just 2.2 inches from the wall and get a 90 inch screen or back it up to 7.2 inches for a 120 inch screen. They do say not to go further than that for the best image, but for what we're doing, we can definitely push that a bit to get a bigger space. The first thing I thought that this would be great for is nighttime shots, especially leaving the background a bit out of focus, similar to what I would do with a green screen. And I am really excited by these first results. We just use a still image, which is this woods shot to put Emily in front of. The best part is how you can go handheld like this and really sell it. Of course, these are very dark shots, so make sure you're watching this episode in 4K. Otherwise, it's probably gonna look terrible because, you know, YouTube. But for me, this first test is really solid, especially since a shot like this is often really difficult to make work for me on green screen. And setting the shot up was incredibly easy. I just had two lights, one kicking from the side and one that is adding a very subtle fill in the front and above, which I just had Josh holding. And the one that he's holding is our new tube light from Nanlite. It's easily one of my favorite lights that I've ever owned, but we'll definitely get to that in another episode. But with this setup, I could do different handheld movements, like small moves in and even around a little bit, adding a lot of depth and realism. But jumping to our next setup, which is another picture, this one in Out of Focus City, we were going for a look as if she was standing in front of this giant window at Blue Hour. Again, this lets us be handheld and get some nice moves in. And again, it works really, really well. Similar lighting setup here too, just two lights. One as the light to boost what's coming from the screen and one that is bringing up some fill on her other side. Or we could just go totally abstract, use this for style stylized pieces, use design behind our talent to build out the scene, which could be great for music videos or other similar type work, again, in a much more organic way. Even some possibilities for visual effects. This shot 
here reminds me of Annihilation, maybe putting your actor in some kind of sci-fi wall. There's even a world where you build something out around your scene for a very scaled down version of what Mandalorian did. I mean, obviously, a a very scaled down version. Of course, you have to keep in mind that there is no parallax. The image isn't gonna alter with the position of your camera, but I am really loving this for a way of doing green screen without the green screen. Even just for things like this, the main reason we stopped doing our green screen background is because of that extra step and hassle that it added to our workflow. Next, we're gonna take this thing out to our garage to see about doing a car shot. But before we do that, let's take a look at the actual projector. And it's this short throw projector that really does make all this doable. Like I said before, we can keep the LG Cinebeam behind our talent and hidden since you can get it as close as 2.2 inches for a 90 inch screen. And like I said before, the suggested max size is 7.2 inches for a 120 inch screen for best image quality. But with what we're doing, we really can push it further without any issues. It's also 4K with a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and DC P3 97% color accuracy and HDR 10, a bunch of numbers and random words for most of us, I know. But what matters is it makes for a much better image, which when compared to the projector I currently have in my theater room, the difference is insane. All those fancy numbers really lead to a much more rich and realistic image, which obviously helps a ton when you're trying to fake that background. Plus, for all my cinephiles, you're getting much closer to the filmmaker's intention for each film that you're watching with this thing. If you compare the look and color here on my personal projector to the Cinebeam, the difference is massive. Of course, my projector is 1080, but the difference in contrast between the two and the nuance that you're getting that's completely lost in my projector is making a huge difference. And obviously, that that's the main use of this beautiful white box of movie love, just watching great movies. I really love the menu on this thing too. Super clean and simple with a great remote, basically acts like a laser pointer, which in here we can find the Netflix app so you can jump in and stream 4K Netflix content right from the projector. And of course you can stream 4K from other platforms like YouTube. It's actually the only projector that can stream 4K from places like that. There's a pair of built-in five watt speakers that are actually really solid too. I'd say just as good as my soundbar in my living room. So it's pretty much an all-in-one system. And this thing is really bright, which made the next setup workable. similar here as far as setup and we went with a more artificial light overall bursting some light through the front and back of the car and then again some movement in light to get that sense of motion now we only had the projector for a short period of time so i have so many more ideas that i want to try and i'm seriously considering getting one just for the effects aspects alone i really love the idea of using this as set extension or for process shots like driving or as a replacement for things just like this or even as a great solution for talking headpieces, giving you a ton of options with only having to change the lighting. Overall, you are starting to see the attempt at virtual productions at lower scales lately, but it's all still really inaccessible to most of us. It makes me wonder if a projector like this is something that could be a starter sort of DIY stripped down version of those virtual productions to some extent. Of course, it's not that full virtual productions where you do have that parallax and the camera is interacting. It would be more for the people who who don't have that extensive technical ability in those virtual environments to still take advantage of that sort of general idea. But that's it for today. Huge thanks to LG for letting us borrow this bad boy to try these ideas out. If you wanna know more about the projector, check out the links in the notes below. And don't forget about the new art list and art grid editing challenge. Be sure to check out the notes and jump on that contest for a chance at some great prizes. And of course, our blog is still cooking. We have the part two of our Color Grading 101 series written by Colin Kelly. So definitely check that out in the links below as well. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.